report. At least 15 people have died in Georgia due to Hurricane Helene. A flash flood emergency was issued in Atlanta after more than 10 inches of rain fell. Georgia's governor confirmed earlier this afternoon that multiple people remain trapped in buildings. He says water rescues have been essentially non-stop since Helene's landfall. We're all What's going on YouTube? Just your boy Ryan, back with another video, man. It's not a video I ever think I'd be making, but we're here, as you can see, man. We safe, we're in a safe place. Um, the hurricane that came through where I live, where me and my family live, was something that we ain't never been through before, something that we never expected to happen. Um, but we safe, by the grace of God, man. Shout out to him, you know what I'm saying? But it's pretty much a story time, man, how we survived this hurricane. So, um, like, we heard about, you know, rumors of the hurricane was supposed to be coming. And um, I'm a prepper. I will say I'm a prepper, so I'm always prepared for stuff. Um, I wasn't prepared quite for this, but I'm always prepared for outages. And I'm used to, you know, a couple of days of no lights and stuff like that. Like, no big deal. Cool. Um, so we knew the hurricane was supposed to go up through the Atlanta way. So I'm closer to the Carolinas, um, but we knew the hurricane was going to go this way. As you can see, um, it's going to be a lot of B-roll footage. Um, but as you can see, the hurricane has had to shift a different way, right? Um, so when the power went out, um, it messed up the cell towers. So uh, we were keeping track of the hurricane via the Weather Channel app. Um, so, once we lost power, it seemed like the cell towers went down, so we couldn't really tell what was going on. Um, so, I knew it would be bad between the times of 2 a.m. Um, to about 7 a.m., right? So, I really picked up, I think I woke up about 3 a.m., um, and I'm so used to, like, I knew it would be bad, but I didn't think it would be this bad. Uh, so, like, when I woke up, you know, I told my girl to grab the kids um, because if anybody know anything about tornadoes, tornadoes have a typical sound of like, they sound like trains. They sound like trains on the train track, not necessarily like a choo-choo, but like a chugga, no chugga, chugga, all that. But it sounds like a train actually on a train track. So I heard it, you know what I'm saying? It's pitch black and where we live in our house and you can't really see it. You know, I got cameras and nothing works. So um, I hear it. So she grabbed the kids, she put them in the closet, as you can see. Um, but, you know, I got, I have to see it. I need to see what's going on. And it turns out, like, after everything is over, that we were actually in a category two hurricane. You know, the hurricane started off as a category four, but it ended up being a category two by the time it got to where we were. And I'm inland. Like, usually hurricanes break up when it hits land, but this hurricane decided to, like, nope, I'm gonna stay in water up until the last very second. So when it hit us and we got directly hit. Um, so, you know, I'm at the front door. Like, we have a, a storm door. Um, so I'm opening the door because I have to see. I have to see. I'm one of those people who have to see it, not to believe it, because I definitely believed it, but I have to see it so I can be prepared. Like, if I don't know, like we just in the house and a tree fall on the house, like, and I don't know what's going on, like, I don't know how to fix the problem. So I kept going to the front door, excuse me, I kept going to the front door to see, you know, like what was going on outside. So not necessarily like hell, but it was crazy, 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 crazy winds. And if you guys know anything about tropical storms, um, the things that make tropical storms sorry, scary is that you, you can't determine which way the wind is going to blow, right? So on a normal day, wind is the blows east, west, north, south, right? But tropical storms, what make them so dangerous, the winds blow from each and every way, which hence you get tornadoes, right? Um, so I knew, again, I don't know what's going on. I don't realize that we're in a category two hurricane. I just know that, you know, it's going to be bad wind. Um, and the wind definitely picked up. It picked up, it picked up really bad, um, especially in my area. Um, so I'm running back and forth, like, you know, I open the door, the wind get crazy. I'm like, you know, it's here, the tornado's here. Like, I'm still looking for a tornado, not realizing that we're in a full-fledged hurricane. So, man, I mean, I'm running back and forth, 
they in the closet. So I'm sitting there. I would sit down, give it a second. Um, then I'll go back to the door. Bug trying to get me. I'll go back to the door, open the door. I would look, you know what I'm saying? The winds get crazy. The trees is leaning. I'll run back to the room because I'm like, it's here. Like, it's finally here. Um, and it's just something that you... Was I scared? I was scared because I didn't know if I would have time to make it to the interior closet as fast as I should. You know what I'm saying? So like, I wasn't necessarily scared for my family or like my stuff. Um, like, like I said, we're preppers. So like, granted I have some like, some bases that are like, are irreplaceable. Like some of them things are one-on-ones. Um, but like I grabbed those, put them in the closet, like stuff that of importance to us was in our place to where we were. And I got great cases, so I'm pretty sure that it'd been all right. Um, I wasn't really worried about like cabs and amps. Like I can get that stuff in place. Um, and I got insurance, like always have insurance on your things. If you never had insurance on anything like renters, whether you rent or own homeowner insurance, anything like put insurance on your stuff, especially if you use this stuff to make a living. The importance of having insurance on your stuff will make your life so much easier and less stress on you. Um, so we do have insurance and I definitely have insurance on all of my equipment from my computers to my bases to my cabs. Like I'm not worried about none of that, but like I would rather not because insurance moves really slow when it's been, when, especially when it comes to claims. But um, so pretty much back to the story, like by the time the storm was over, um, we were trapped in our neighborhood because a couple of trees like this, these pine trees, the big ones have fell over a block the street, trapped in one way, trapped in on the other way. It's only two ways out to where I live. Um, I guess some guy, I heard a chainsaw, he cut the chainsaw and cut the tree up. So people were getting stuck um, in mud and people trying to drive through people's yards and people were fighting over gas, but shout out to my truck. Shout out to my truck. So. I got all-terrain tires. Um, it's a diesel, so like, you, if you know anything about diesels, you know how they how they run. They're beasts. Um, people were fighting over gas. I seen people fighting over gas, and like, I heard stories of people pulling guns out on people. Cause I think the thing about the world, what makes the world, or what makes people in the world scary, is fear. Like the fear of the unknown. Like not knowing what's going to happen, especially if you got a family, you're not knowing how you're going to feed your kids. I, I read a lot of posts on Facebook. People were unprepared for the whole storm. Um, not having gas, you know what I'm saying? If you're one of those people who keeps only a little bit of gas in your car, maybe just a wake-up call for you to start filling your car up because you never know. Like, you just never know. Um, so I had talked to my dad before the storm. So I filled my truck up. I never typically like to keep my gas with below a half a tank. Um, I had talked to my dad and he sounded really worried. Um, they live a couple hours away from me. So uh, I was like, you know what? Let me fill up. I grabbed some cases of water. Um, you know, like, cool. Again, not knowing that this storm is going to turn into a category two on land, like, which is crazy. It's unheard of, right? And then, so the area that I live of, nothing, I think the last bad thing that happened in the area I lived in was 10 years ago during, in 2014. If you're in the Atlanta area, you know about the ice storm, how the ice storm kind of jacked everything up and people lost power for like three days, about three days. And that was the last thing people were unprepared for, right? But that was the ice storm, you know, so never a hurricane. I would never in a million years. That's why I live in Georgia. I was like, I'm not gonna move close to the coast of Florida or, you know what I'm saying? Florida's nice, nice to visit, but no hurricanes. I didn't want to live through that, but um, <laughs> I still ended up being in one. But anyway, um, continue the story. So we eventually get out. So we're looking, you know, we have all the portable chargers in the world. We got every kind of portable charger in the world, USB-C to USB-A to, we got plenty of them. We wasn't worried. We got them in a the car. Like we wasn't worried about stuff being charged. The power being out though, um, your food, your food, bro. So like in the fridge, you probably got a couple of days, but eventually it's hot. Like it's still hot um, in Georgia. So our freezer started melting. So, you know, we shop, we're grocery shoppers. Um, we try not to eat out a lot. Um, so 
the freezer started melting. Um, so we went to a friend's house. They had a grill that night. So we took some food over there. We grilled, you know, it's a good fellowship, but it's only one night. You come back, you still got to go back to your home to where it's dark. It's dark and it's kind of, I ain't gonna say scary, but it's really creepy to see people walking around, like groups of people walking around at night. There's also been stories in the area that I live in on the other side of town that, that people have been looting and like robbing. And it's like, at the end of the day, you always want to be able to keep your family safe. All right, um, the thing I love about my parents, you know, I, I checked in with them often. You know, they said they're good, the power's on. Like, as you can see, it looks, it's normal. No trees down, no nothing. But as soon as you hit my area, like, it's, it looks like Armageddon hit the area. Trees on people's houses, um, like, double two trees, two or three trees in people's houses. Uh, like, and I'm not a tree fan. If you, <laughs> if you was wondering, should you keep the tree? Get rid of the tree. I'm not a tree fan. Um, I think I grew up not a tree fan. My parents may be that way. Like, I hate trees. In my property, in the property, because of stuff like that. Like, the trees that have been there hundreds of years or however many years, 50 years, and uprooted and crashed into the yard and on your car or your house. And, you know, now you're stuck and people are charging ridiculous amounts of money to, to help you get rid of your own tree. But, um, I made a decision, man, the next day. I was like, I have to get my family, you know, somewhere safe. So, you know, having small children, you know, I, sometimes they don't really get the magnitude of how big a situation is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure some of you guys, you probably never knew some of the situations you were in because your parents did really well to disguise it from you, right? Um, but at the end of the day, you always want to keep your people safe. And, you know, when you're used to a certain way of living, whether, you know, amenities, like, I have a smart home. Like, me me and my family, we like smart stuff, smart bulbs. We like to tell Alexa to turn the lights on and off. Um, kids and Wi-Fi, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a technology age where kids use Wi-Fi for everything. The iPads, and that's how they learn and, you know, connect with one another. But... I had to get them up out of there, so we decided to leave with my full tank of gas that I already had, you know what I'm saying? And people in the city fighting for gas, trying to figure out what to do. I think the only thing I would do different is, you know, is uh, make sure I have some kind of power inverter or like a power bank box, not necessarily a generator. I think um, where we live now, I probably wouldn't get a generator, but like when we move, um, I think the first thing I am going to do is make the house capable of being like converted to generator if needed to you know what i'm saying need be but i will say like all in all man like like i said through this whole video it's probably gonna be a bunch of pictures and b-roll of me talking um back and forth but like we survived man and thank god like like i said behind us in front of us left and right like it was it was terrible but like our house was fine um apparently one of those power joints that's connected to the i forget what it's called but it blew up transformer power transformer blew up caught fire behind where we live like i had no clue again like it's pitch black you don't see anything um neighbors trees fell all in there trapped in their house down the street you know people houses is destroyed and people that i know flooded out and it's just something that i've never thought i'll see Especially in a hurricane, like I get Georgia has tornadoes, and again, that's what I was looking for. Not necessarily, you know, I wanted the tornado to come, but that's what I was looking for and expecting because of the wind. You know, that's what was going to get. They said 60 miles per hour wind and stuff like that, and find out that the hurricane shifted towards where we live, and we got a direct hit. But I'm fine, guys. Um, we're fine. I had a lot of content. Like I said, I got some new amps. I got the new Aguilar stuff, man. Got some new cabs. I got new cabs at the church. Um, I got the new AG500 for the church. I got the AG700 for the for the for my for myself. A um, couple new bases, you know what I'm saying, that you guys haven't seen yet. Um, some upcoming tour dates, you know, that I haven't talked about yet. I got some new cases from our Union Blues that they sent. I haven't got to talk about yet. Um, it's just been busy. That's where I've been. You know, it's not on purpose, but 
I promise, you know, once we get back back up and running, you know, power back at the spot, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about it then. But, you know, if you made it this far in the video, guys, like, I appreciate the support. Um, and we made it, man. By the grace of God, man. So, <sighs> till next time, y'all. Peace.